Hello and welcome to this Azure Databricks video. In this video, we're going to look at what is Azure Databricks and some of the key features. And then we're going to go into the demo part to see how we can create Azure Databricks workspace and then how we can perform data processing and data analysis. Therefore, let's get started. The Azure Databricks is a collaborative, scalable, and highly efficient analytics service on the Azure Cloud platform developed in partnership between Microsoft and Databricks. It combines the best of Databricks with Azure's robust cloud service to provide an optimized environment for big data and AI applications. And some of the key features of Azure Databricks are it seamlessly integrates with other Azure services such as the Microsoft Entra ID for identity and access management. And of course, it supports the Azure Block Storage and Azure Data Lake Storage in two. And of course, it supports Azure Synapse Analytics and Azure Machine Learning. On the scalability and performance side, Azure Databricks leverages Azure's scalable infrastructure to handle large-scale data processing and machine learning workloads. It also provides auto-scaling and automated cluster management to efficiently undo varying workloads. It supports interactive Databricks notebook with real-time collaboration, enabling data scientists, engineers, and analysts to work together seamlessly and interactively. So let's go into the demonstration part of this video. I'm going to come to my portal.com azure.com and of course i'm going to actually come into this my resource group and of course i've got quite some resource group i want to focus on this azure synapse resource group click on that and i'm going to see the azure data breaks now it is really easy to create one you can easily come here within your resource group just click on this create and then go to the marketplace and then search for the azure data breaks i'm going to come here and type in azure data breaks and then press enter to commit. And then we're going to see the Azure data breaks. Click on that. And then just go ahead and click on create and then provide all that information. So I'm going to come to the resource group and then use the Azure data breaks already created, which is Azure data breaks demo. And we can see the type Azure data breaks service. So click on that. And then in the overview, I can see the status, this is active, the resource group location, and so many other informations. So we want to actually launch the workspace. So go ahead and click on the launch workspace. Okay, so I'm right now in the Microsoft Azure Databricks. Now I'm going to come to the compute. Under the compute, I've got what's called a cluster created, which is actually called Databricks Demo. You can see this actually running. You can see the name of the compute, and then we can see the runtime, the active message, and so many other information. So I'm going to actually come here. When I click on the new, we can see we have things such as creating notebook, Git folder, data, compute, cluster, SQL warehouse, and so many other information. I'm going to come to this workspace. In the workspace, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the workspace and then open that up. And then I want to access the user. So I'm going to click on that to expand and I can see my user. So I can right click and then go ahead and create notebook. Alternatively, I can come here and then create a new notebook. So when I click create that, I can go ahead and provide a name for the notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. I'm going to call this one, I'm going to call this one um, Demo Notebook. They can give it any meaningful name. Once I'm happy, just press Enter. So we are ready to start our data processing in the Microsoft Azure Databricks. I'm going to come to this notepad. I've got this um, JSON data. So I'm going to go ahead and Control A to select and Control C to copy. And then I'm going to go back and come here and Control V. So basically, we have this from pyspark.sql.type import struct type, struct field, integer, string type. So it's going to be focusing on using the Python, that is the PySpark language here, okay, which is fine. So this is in Python code, PySpark code. So basically, I've got this schema that include the struct field, such as the column and the data type, and then whether it is null or not. So we have all this column, the year, region, subcategory, product, price, quantity, and the sales. And then we have the integer and then the string data types respectively. And of course, at the bottom here, we have this JavaScript object notation data, the JSON file data that include the key value pairs. So basically we have the, um, the key and then we have the values assigned and so on. We have the year, 2015, region, south, subcategory, book cases, and so many other stuff basically it's just a single line of transaction so when i scroll down i can see we have another line of transaction and so on and so forth so i'm going to scroll down at the 
I'm going to type in df as a variable name and equals. So I'm going to use the spark dot create data frame and then open the brackets. Now I can go on and pass the data. So I'm going to type in data comma and then I can type in the schema. Now we can see the intelligence working fine. So this is actually making our life much easier. So basically you have the df equals spark dot create data frame and then pass the data and then the schema that include the columns and so on. So I can press enter and use the display method to display the data frame so i can go and press control enter so when i press control enter i'm going to actually wait for some couple of maybe three seconds or thereabouts and there we go so we are able to successfully read the json data into the spark data frame which is so brilliant so we can see we have this year the region the subcategory the product price the quantity and the sales and then we can see the appropriate data types we have the one to three all number data type of the text or district data types and so many other stuff. So this is basically how we can read. Now, I'm going to come here and create a new code. What about if one actually perform um, data analysis? For instance, let's say one actually filter, we want to see all the region that equals to, let's say, the West region. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to do df dot and I'm going to type in the filter function. Now, in the filter function, we need to provide a condition as the column name. So I'm going to do df dot and I'm going to filter, in this case, the region. So I'm going to type in region and I can see the intelligence, press the tab key, put in some space to make it easier to read. And we're going to use the equals equals and then put some space. And I'm going to filter and see all the West region. So inside single quote, I'm going to type in West and use the dot show method to view the filtered result. So go ahead and press control enter and when I scroll down, there we go. So we have all the transaction for the West region, which is super cool. What about if we actually filter the West and the East region, that is the same column with two conditions. I can come here, I can use an extra opening parenthesis here, and I'm gonna come here and I can go on and put in some space, use a single pipe, and then open another, open a close bracket, and then I can close, close the bracket. So I can inside this open and close bracket and type in the second condition, which is gonna be df dot region, and then the region is gonna be equal to, or space space equal to, inside single quote, east region. So this is basically how we can define two conditions, so this is the all logical operation. So go ahead and press control enter and there we go. So we have all the records. So we have all the transactions where the region is equal to West and the East region, which is beautiful. Now, what about if you want to include one condition? I want to actually filter for that. I want to say all the sales that is greater than or equal to let's say 200 i can of course add an extra condition now it's so easy i'm going to come here and wrap another opening bracket and i'm going to come here and i can put in some space so this is going to be the two condition for the all logical operation so i'm going to put in some space and then use the ampersand and open another bracket and then under closing bracket okay so i can define the df dot sales column so i want to show whether it is greater than or equal to in this case 200 so again this is how to do the condition i'm going to actually uh, come here make some space control enter there we go so we can see we have the east and the west region with the sales that is greater than or equal to 200. So this is just basically how we can perform data processing by reading some JavaScript data into the Microsoft Azure Databricks and then perform some data analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share with your friends and comment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.